Hello, welcome. This is Chris Morgan, and you're about to view part six of our reactor subtractive synth video series. In this video, we will show how to add pulse width modulation using LFOs that we created in the previous videos. I'm really running out of space here, but I'm going to keep pushing things, and we'll build up to using macros in a couple more videos to, to make things um, better. Uh, I'll start down in the in the panel for now to make a little room. I have the wrench on and I'm going to go ahead and change this one LFO shape label to vibrato so that we can see that that's going to be clearly labeled that way. And then I'm going to take the tremolo that we just did and scooch it down below so we can see that there. That'll give me some room over here to add the pulse width modulation. So knowing that things are getting really crowded here, um, the thing with with pulse width modulation is it, it at a regular rate, just like vibrato regularly changes the pitch at a periodic rate, at a sub-audio periodic rate, tremolo varies the amplitude at a sub-audio periodic rate, width is the, the ratio of the up and down cycle of the pulse wave. If it's symmetrical, then it's a square wave. But as we alter that, we get a nice, what's uh, very similar to a chorusing effect and it's very common standard synth sound, so you will recognize it immediately. All we have to do, since this does respond to negative one and positive one, we don't have to use the unipolar one, although it doesn't make too much of a difference. Uh, we will just copy our bipolar vibrato LFO, copy and paste, and we can we'll leave it here for now, even though it's kind of a mess, and I'll hook up the output of that to the width here. Now, there's a couple things to think about. First off, it's very important that we continuously vary the width, the pulse width. We can't jump from one width to the other. It doesn't work to do that. We have to hear it slide from smoothly from one width to the next width. So we really don't need the square wave output. So we can just simplify our life a little bit and get rid of that. Notice that the square still shows up there, though. And so we'll need to go over to our our um, preferences and under the function we can change the number of of inlets. Let me check that again here um, and set the number of ports. Sorry, um, to to two. And now we'll see that disappear. So all we really need is the ramp and sign. In fact, I think it's simpler just to only use the sign. In fact. But I sometimes prefer a triangle. So we also really don't need to have the width control on that, just really the depth and the rate. And so we can have a slightly different effect from sine and triangle, which I'll leave that for now. So we've got a slightly simplified thing. Again, to move this down in, this, in the screen below, I'll select them in the structure, and they're highlighted there, and then I can move them over this way. And I'll go ahead and change this from vibrato to PWM for pulse width modulation LFO shape. Then we have our depth and our rate there. Our rate there. So I'll take off the wrench and play a note. I'm going to have my depth of my tremolo down, my depth of my vibrato down. Those are effectively off. And now set this to trying to sine wave and increase the depth. And I do not hear anything. And why do I not hear anything? Because I'm not listening to the pulse wave. I'm listening to the ramp wave. So I've got to make sure um, that I am listening to the right one. And so this is a good example of how my synth is not idiot proof. Because I, I definitely was doing something idiotic. Uh, we can. It's hard to make those things um, not idiot proof. It takes a couple of extra steps. We can do that. But... For now, we'll just leave it that way where you have to understand that you've got to have square wave selected in order for there to be pulse width modulation. So now, I've got this uh, way too fast, so I'll slow that down. I can also set lower the, um, lower the rate there, and my depth, um, you can hear how much it's, it's moving. Uh, unfortunately, I made a mistake here by leaving my, my width control at some other value. So I'll bring the width back for a second just so I can alter it to be zero. Uh, and part of that is it's going all the way down to zero and so maybe I don't want that 
that much. So I may later give this an offset value, but for now you can you can hear the effect. I'll set it back to. Um, uh, with try with sine versus triangle, you can tell that it spends more time at the extremes with sine than it does triangle. That's why I kind of prefer that. But there's our typical sound. It's a little too much extreme because it's going all the way down to the negative one. We could set the depth or make this unipolar and it wouldn't be going quite as extreme. So that might be important. Oh, and also I have it set to, to two, which is which is not good. So I've got I had a few things not set well there. There we have a little bit better. Uh, that was a mistake obviously because I had it set to two, so my mistake there. And there's our more typical sound. So a couple of mistakes I made there, but not worth me doing a different video. It just demonstrates how we always have to be on our toes, checking what we're hearing versus what we're seeing. I go back to sine. You can hear a little bit subtle difference between sine and triangle. I will go ahead and change this label so that it doesn't say ramp anymore and just says triangle. Okay, so it's a slight difference there. So very simple. Now I've got it I've got this set up there. Our next video will feature adding a pitch bend and then we'll do the filter and our synth will be almost complete.